You know what the best thing about filming YouTube videos is? Is that I can have all of this done and then be wearing yoga pants on the bottom. But I bet you didn't know that, did you? I also have a really big dog in my background, so that's fun too! <laughs> Ago, probably about a week ago I put up a video on how to stay motivated with your at-home workout routine since then I have had a ton of questions about how just to be motivated in life in general and I told you guys I was gonna make a video about that as well so let's just hurry up and jump right into it these are my top 10 tips on how to stay motivated in life in general tip number one as soon as you wake up in the morning visualize that might mean that you are sitting in your bed directly as you wake up, sitting and thinking to yourself, what do I want my life to be? What do I want my short-term goals to be? What do I want my long-term goals to be? The thing is that successful people, one of the tips that they share with the world in gaining their own success is that they wake up every morning and they visualize either what they want to accomplish in that day or what they want to accomplish in general in life because what this does is it keeps it in the forefront of your mind and you're more likely to spend your day doing things that are effective and moving you forward to your goals. Tip number two, start with a good breakfast. I know you hear it all the time and you're like, yes, I know I get it. I'm supposed to start my day with eggs and oatmeal and fruit and whatever, but it really is so important when it just comes to staying motivated just because your body functions off of food. Food is your energy, f food is your fuel. So think about it, if you're starting every day eating something sugary like, what is it, like Fruit Loops or some kind of granola bar that's packed with chocolate and sugar, your body is not getting the most efficient start to your day. You're gonna get halfway through your day and crash. So the better you start your day, the more likely you are to do actions that are effective and that are gonna move you closer to your goals. Tip number three, read 10 minutes or one chapter of a personal development book every single day. My dog is scratching in the background. That is so obnoxious. Um, so right now I am currently reading Girl Boss. Now listen, I know that personal development, self-improvement books are so cliche. Before I started reading them, I thought that they were like books that, I don't know, I thought people that just had big issues needed these books. Like, you're really crazy in the head, you need to read a book and get through it. Um, and I know that sounds so ignorant now, but at the time, that's what I thought it was. But now, every single day, I make sure that I put about an hour aside just to read my personal development. The reason this is so important is because every single day you're reading stories about people that are where you are now or have been where you are now and they've kind of overcome and created something of their, uh, with themselves. So it kind of shows you that anybody can achieve a goal if you just put in the work. Uh, for example, this book, she came from almost nothing, digging through trash cans and doing her own business in her garage, and now she is the founder and CEO of Nasty Gal. So make sure every day you choose a self-development book. This might be something that you need to improve in your life. If you are unorganized, you might wanna get a book about organization. If you are really bad with managing money, you might wanna get a book on finances. That's how I choose my books. If there's an area of my life that I feel like I'm neglecting or I need a little work on, I choose a book that's related to that and I make sure that I read it daily. Tip number four, create a clear and defined why. Why is this important? I'll tell you, easy as day. So a lot of people in terms of Beachbody coaching come to me and they say, I ultimately would like money. I wanna be, I wanna be successful with my finances. I don't wanna have to spend every day worrying about where the money's coming from. When am I gonna pay my bills? Is my rent gonna be paid on time? Money is great. The fact of the matter is we all need it. Nobody can survive without money. It buys food, it buys you know, a roof over your head, we need it. However, money is not a why. It can never be your why because if you are so focused on making money, you're never gonna move forward. You might move forward, but eventually it's gonna get to a point where you're just like, I don't wanna do this, this isn't fun. So my why, yes, I would love to have more money, just so that I can do things, so that I can send my kids to college, so that I could pay off debt. But my why is my family. 
My why is my children. I want money so that I can send my kids to college. I want money so that if anything happens medically, I can take care of my children. So you can see how money is a connection, but it's not the ultimate why. Ultimately, everything I do, every decision I make, every choice, every opportunity that I choose to go forward with is for my children. That why is so strong that no matter how hard the journey gets, no matter how terrible my days are, I'm always going to keep pushing forward because it's that important to me. So money's not going to drive me, but my family is. Tip number five, spend time every single day in a space that, that inspires you. The reason this is so important is because if you are spending all day in an office and you hate your job and you're miserable, how are you going to be motivated? So if you are a person who gets inspired by the beach, if being at the beach just fuels the fire in your soul and makes you happy and makes you feel like you have purpose, you need to make it a priority to get to the beach. This doesn't necessarily have to be a daily thing, but maybe something weekly, like once a week you can go and spend two hours at the beach just sitting down, thinking about life, thinking about what you want to do with your life. Tip number six, follow people who are where you want to be. So here's the thing, everyone starts somewhere. Everyone starts from ground zero. So, but here's the thing, success leaves clues. So if you are following people who are where you want to be, they're going to be showing you what they're doing to get there, what they have done to get there. They're going to share their story. They're going to tell you your str their struggles. So say for instance, you want to be the editor in chief of a magazine. If you are following a successful editor in chief of a magazine, you're seeing every single day that she's living the life that you want to live and you're seeing how she does it. So make sure that you are following people who are where you want to be, whether it is financially, whether it is in a career path, whether it is philanthropy work. You don't want to aim to be a carbon copy of a person that you admire, but you can take some things that you do and use it, use things that they do as inspiration for the way that you're living your life. Tip number seven, and probably one that maybe you've never thought about, but never be the smartest, most driven individual in a room. Why is this so important? Think about it. If you are hanging out with a bunch of individuals who have no drive, who have no desire to learn, have no desire to grow, chances are you are going to be the same way. You're never going to be able to learn to be better when you're staying in a room with people that are at an equal or lower playing field. If you walk into a room and you don't feel challenged or you don't feel inspired, you're probably not in the right spot. So you always want to aim to grow and to be better, but you want to surround yourself with people that have grown and are better in certain aspects. That way you'll always be inspired, you'll always be challenged, and you'll always be feeling like you're around people that are making a difference in the world or in your life. Tip number eight, eliminate negativity in your life. Period. If it's not benefiting you, it doesn't need to be there. This might be your group of friends that you hang out with after school. This might be your group of friends that you hang out with on the weekend. This might be your Facebook newsfeed. If there's somebody who every time you do a post, they come and criticize you and try to make you feel lesser or dumb, get rid of it. Period. You don't need them in your life. The more you hold on to those negative things, the more negative you're going to start to think. So you need to replace all of that with positivity. Replace all the negativity in your life with positivity and every single day you'll start to find that over time you'll start to think positively and not even realize that you are doing it. It'll just become a way of life and you will think yourself. My card ran out of space so if the lighting or the cropping changed or anything like that that is why, but it's okay. We're going to move right on to tip number nine, and that is to change the things that you can and accept the things that you cannot. I know you've probably heard this and you're like, yeah, that's easier said than done, and it is. It is so much easier said than done, and it's something that I personally have to work on constantly. But every single time I'm feeling stressed out about a situation, I ask myself, what can be done about this? If nothing can be done, why am I worrying myself? Why am I stressing myself? It is not appropriate for me to be feeling these emotions over something that I have no control over. So if it is something that I could change, um, I do little steps every single day or do steps in the moment to make it happen. If it's not something I could change, I just say, let it go, 
breathe, release, make it happen. Because if you're holding on to these things that you can't change every single day, it's going to be nearly impossible to stay motivated because your mind is going to be clouded and your judgment is going to be skewed all because you're thinking about and worrying yourself over something that you have zero control over. Tip number 10 and one of my favorite tips on this list is to dive into something you are passionate about every single night before bed. This is so important, like so unbelievably important because if you're going to bed every single night stressing or worrying, you're going to wake up stressing and worrying. But if you're going to bed doing something that you enjoy, chances are you're going to get more restful sleep, you're going to go to bed happy, you're going to wake up a little more rested, a little more happy. So for me, I really enjoy YouTube videos. So every night before I go to bed while I'm doing dishes or cooking dinner, I take that time for me to watch YouTube videos. For you, this might be reading a good book, it might mean doing your nails, it might mean having a, you know, just full on facial day, I don't know, whatever it is, you have to find the thing that makes you happy and make sure that every night before you go to bed, you're spending a little bit of time doing that so that you can ensure you're going to bed happier and more relaxed. And because I love you guys, I'm going to leave you with this video with a bonus tip and that is to keep your space clean. This can be in your home, this can be in your office, wherever you spend the most time in your day, make sure that that space is clean and organized. If you are sitting at a desk where there are papers everywhere and filing that needs to be put away and notes and just collected dust, you are never going to feel motivated, you're never going to feel inspired. You're going to be feeling like every day you're walking into a space that drains you. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope this helps you live your most motivated life possible. Fun fact, I don't know when this video will go up, but today is actually my birthday. So this is not going to waste. I will be going out and doing something. but. I, you know, it's my birthday so I'm spending the day kind of reflecting on the past year and the past two years and what I want to do the next year and I just want to share with you guys, these are things that I have been doing every day for the past probably year, year and a half, two years and so these are really tried and true. I have spent the time formulating this list based off the things that I have just started to do every single day through habit without even thinking of it. So I hope that this helps you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if there's anything else you would like to see in terms of motivation or how to stay motivated to some kind of goal or something specific. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye. Mwah. Thank you.